पॉलिसी बाजार पर एक करोड़ रुपए का टर्म लाइफ इंश्योरेंस केवल चार सौ पचास रूपए महीने ऐसी शुरू प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी रीच्ड अहमदाबाद दिस आफ्टरनून टू मीट हिज मदर हीरा बेन Modi who is admitted in a hospital the prime minister's mother was hospitalized after a health deteriorated last night Hira Ben Modi who turned 99 in June this year has been admitted to a hospital in Ahmedabad this comes a day after prime minister Modi's brother Pralad Modi's car met with an accident near Mysuru in Karnataka Pralad was accompanied by his son daughter in law and grandson when the accident took place let me now go across to Sohit who's joining us from outside uh, the hospital where Hira Ben Modi has been admitted so so it any new medical uh, bulletin from the hospital about the health condition Uh, well, uh, while it was expected that around 7 p.m. a new mel- a health bulletin will be uh, provided, as of now uh, nothing has been provided. But yes, uh, we are present right outside the UN Mehta Institute of Cardiology and Research Centre, where the Prime Minister visited uh, in the day. Uh, several of the BJP leaders, MLAs, as well as the cabinet ministers from Gujarat have been coming in and going out, trying to ensure that there is uh, no difficulty that is being faced, and they are also trying to get. maximum information possible from the doctors from the hospital uh, in fact uh, uh, in the afternoon what we saw is that around 4 pm the prime minister himself reached over here he was present for around 90 minutes in the hospital where he spoke to the doctors as well as his relatives after which he went back to delhi now as of now the health bulletin that was uh, uh, announced or uh, provided in the afternoon it does not say why was she admitted but it only says that her condition is stable and she has been admitted over here uh, however what we have been told is that since uh, she is 99 years old she is facing some difficulties in breathing as well after which she was brought in the hospital she is being treated and once the new health bulletin is out only then we will come to know that why exactly has she been admitted and what is her current condition but as of now what we can say is that her condition is stable the prime minister was present for over 90 minutes this month itself on 5th when the prime minister came to uh, uh, amdabad uh, for uh, voting uh, he went uh, uh, the mom, uh, he met her mom he visited her house in amdabad and after that he went uh, uh, for other projects as well uh, d- uh, before this in june he was in amdabad even then uh, at uh, when she turned 99 the prime minister met her mother after which he went on uh, for uh, uh, unveiling several projects across gujarat but yes whenever the prime minister comes in gujarat he met some mom uh, this time when he came to know about uh, that she has been admitted he came over here he was in the hospital for around 90 minutes later he flew back to delhi but several of the cabinet ministers several of the bjp leaders they have been visiting the hospital as of now we are waiting for the next health bulletin and only after that few more details will be out that why was she admitted and what is her current condition what is she treat- uh, being treated for So it many thanks for joining us with all those details from in the path. Let's move on now a day after a setback from the Allahabad High Court in the OBC quota and local bodies the Yogi government in Uttar Pradesh has set up a commission the court has quashed uh, uh, the rapid OBC survey done in 2017 and had said that the local body polls cannot go ahead with OBC quota basis that survey now the UP government has taken the first step towards quota for OBCs in urban bodies the state government uh, has set up the UP commission on OBC quota the commission is expected to gather data data on the backwardness and submit its report the government has notified the quota uh, the total shouldn't exceed 50% limit four terrorists were killed in what uh, was an encounter that happened after the police intercepted a truck on the outskirts of jammu this morning large quantities of arms and ammunition including seven ak47 rifles one us made m4 rifle three pistols and grenade were recovered from the encounter however the driver of the truck on which they were riding managed to escape nasir masudi with more details This truck transporting heavily armed terrorists was on its way to Srinagar from Jammu when it was intercepted by the police in Sidra near Jammu at 7 a.m. Heavy gunfire followed. Within an hour, all the four terrorists had been eliminated. The truck driver managed to escape. Today morning we spotted a suspicious movement of a truck which was unusual at this point of time moving on this road. This was followed 
and at Sidra Nakai it was stopped. After which the truck was searched. As soon as the search started, the terrorists hiding inside opened fire at us, which was retaliated. The terrorists are believed to have infiltrated through the international border in Jammu. They were heavily armed. Seven AK rifles, one M4 rifle, and three pistols were recovered besides other arms and ammunition. This is a second such encounter in last two years in Jammu when a huge cache of arms and ammunition has been recovered from a truck transporting terrorists. In November 2020, four terrorists were killed and 11 AK rifles were recovered from a truck at Nagrota in Jammu. The truck was burnt in the gunfire in that encounter too. The truck driver had managed to flee. Today's encounter comes hours before Home Minister Amit Shah's meeting to review security situation in Jammu and Kashmir. For the last few years, Jammu appears to have become a major infiltration route to push militants and arms into the valley. Today's encounter only explains the extent of threat, despite a massive security structure deployed on the ground. In Srinagar, Nazir Masoodi for NDTV. Meanwhile, Union Home Minister Amit Shah chaired a crucial security meeting on German Kashmir today in Delhi with top security brass, Union Home Secretary Ajay Bhalla, German Kashmir DGP Dilbak Singh, head of security agencies, as well as Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha attended the meeting. The Home Minister held a separate meeting on Leh Ladakh as well. On the other hand, the Congress party has written to the Union Home Minister Amit Shah alleging multiple breaches in the security of the Bharat Joro Yatra. The party has demanded proper protection for its leader Rahul Gandhi. The Bharat Joro Yatra ko badnam karne ka shadiyantra hai aur jodne ke is yagya ko kaun rokhna chahega zahir si baat hai wo rokhna chahega jo todna chahta hai Bharat. तो सबके चेहरे सबके सामने आ रहे हैं कौन जोड़ना चाह रहा है और वो जोड़ने के लिए क्या क्या कर रहा है 108 दिन लगातार चल रहे हैं और तोड़ने वाले अपनी पुलिस के माध्यम से अपनी दोस्ताना मीडिया के माध्यम से अलग अलग माध्यम से इस यात्रा में खलल डालने की कोशिश की जा रही है well, the government has no intention to regulate airfares. Civil Aviation Minister Jyoti Raditya Sindhya told NDTV in an exclusive interview. He said the market has to play itself out. He was responding to a question on whether cutthroat competition between airlines in India meant that customers benefited from cheap fares, which, uh, uh, while the profitability of India's financially stressed airlines continued to be impacted. However, at the current moment, the airfares during holiday season are skyrocketing. There's hyper competitiveness as well in the Indian civil aviation sector. Um, you know, cutthroat fares, and that means in well, that's a, good. It is good. It's good for the consumer. Absolutely. But for the viability of the airlines going forward, the argument that the airlines raise is that it, you know, aviation turbine fuel needs to come down more at the level of the centre. Perhaps include that in the GST. With regard to your comment on cutthroat competition. That's a factor that plays in the market between players. Sure. I do not think that you want a ministry which has deregulated this market to then again become a regulator. And therefore, the market has to play itself out. We've also seen, after 20 years, a new entrant entering the sector. Yes. This sector has been always known for companies that shut shop. Uh, you've you got Akasa Air, yeah. uh, which has started uh, a new airline. Uh, they started with two planes. They have now very rapidly increased right. their fleet over the last three months. Yes. Uh, to very, very high levels. They're also playing uh, 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 for customers in terms of giving them a value proposition with low prices. Uh, so therefore, it depends on every market player, the strategy that the market player assumes. And I do not think it is for government or the ministry to start uh, interfering in the pricing mechanism, uh, which may be to the advantage of customers on the one hand, and may be a volume game for some uh, players on the other hand. Let's move on now. January is likely to be a critical month as far as COVID infections in India are concerned. This as per sources. Meanwhile, no government facility in the national capital has free of cost COVID vaccines, while paid vaccines for all at private facilities are available at uh, 386 rupees 25 paise, and they continue to be available over the next few days, though not in significant numbers. This when the government has been urging people to take booster doses. At least two government hospitals have uh, 
uh, very low vaccination stock at the moment over the last couple of days. That's been the situation. Priyanshi Sharma is now joining us with more details on this critical aspect of vaccination and other details that have been shared today. Uh, Priyanshi, first of all, which hospitals did you go to for a reality check? What did you find out and what, the, what is the health ministry saying at the moment about both vaccines and uh, infections? Maha, the COVID bulletin shows uh, that there are no government centers that are uh, uh, administering vaccines in the national capital and only paid vaccines are available. Now, apart from that, we also visited certain government hospitals, one that's run by the Delhi government, which is the LNJP hospital, and we also visited the RML hospital, which is run by the central government. Both of these hospitals had no vaccination going on for the last three to four days, and we spoke to the officials there who told us that they've completely run out of the vaccine stock. That is why they're not able to administer vaccines. Now, at RML Hospital and uh, the LNJP Hospital, we were, we were told that uh, the officials have written a letter to the government to ask them for more doses. In RML Hospital specifically, they, uh, this entire month, there had been no vaccinations whatsoever. There were zero vaccinations, only barring three days when there were 10 to 20 vaccinations. That just goes on to show how low, and in fact, there is no stock in these hospitals and across all the government hospitals in the national capital. Now, who does this impact? 60 plus people uh, people aged 60 plus are eligible to get a free booster dose at government hospitals but now they can't because they're just not available other people all eligible the entire eligible population can also get dose one and dose two at these hospitals but they also can't get that and uh, hospital officials told us that hundreds of people are coming to them to get their vaccine doses but they have to refuse uh, to them because they just don't have the doses we'll have to see whether the situation gets better it comes at a time when the government has been motivating people to go and get their booster doses done uh, considering that COVID surge in China and despite that there are no vaccines available free of cost in the national capital. Now there are also some steps that are being taken by the government. Uh, the Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia will visit the Delhi airport tomorrow to take a stock of the COVID situation. This at the time when the health ministry sources have told us that uh, in the last two days there were 6,000 tests conducted for international passengers and out of them 39 turned positive. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the sources have also told us that January will be a crucial month uh, as far as India's COVID infection trajectory is concerned yeah. and we'll have to see. They're also saying that uh, cases might rise though deaths are unlikely to rise. So uh, there's also been an important step taken towards international passengers. Mm. Air Suvida has been made mandatory for okay. Uh, people coming from six countries. There's a mandatory RT-PCR that's going to happen from next week for people coming from Japan, China, Singapore, Hong Kong, Thailand. Uh, so these countries will have to, uh, people coming from these countries will have to get an RT-PCR. Right. These Priyanji, are the steps being taken for but the vaccines uh, not being available. Definitely details. a concern. Right. Many thanks, Priyanshi. Let's move on now. The Commission for Air Quality Management has issued directions to ban the use of coal in industrial, domestic and other miscellaneous applications in the entire Delhi NCR region from the 1st of January 2023. That's next year. However, the use of low sulfur coal in thermal power plants has been exempted from the ban. Around 1.7 million tons of coal is used annually in industrial applications in NCR with about 1.4 million tons being being consumed in six major industrial districts alone. Now, this commission was constituted, uh, uh, had an, in fact constituted an expert group to examine and deliberate upon all suggestions and proposals. In its report, uh, the expert group has also strongly recommended phasing out heavily polluting fossil fuels like coal and mandating cleaner fuels to the extent possible. Vedant is now joining us uh, with more details on this uh, uh, ban that will be enforced from the 1st of January. Vedant, how will this first of all be enforced? Will there be fines levied on those who flout the ban or will any other stricter measures be taken against uh, those who flout it? Well, Maha, the air quality panel has said it categorically in its statement that uh, those industries who do not follow this particular ban or who, uh, you know, continue to use fuels that are not part of the standard approved list of uh, fuels of the air quality panel will have to face straight away closure. That's what the air quality panel has said. And uh, it has also uh, said that other than, you know, facing straight away closure, they will also have to pay heavy environmental compensation. Uh, that's what the air quality panel has said. Now, in fact, 
Minister, as you rightly pointed out, the Delhi NCR region coal dominates um, the industrial sector. In fact, as you rightly mentioned, 1.7 million tons of coal is used annually. Now, remember, experts say that this is a desirable move given uh, that you know air quality continues to uh, you know plunge to the uh, very poor category. So, from an air quality perspective, this is a desirable move. But experts say that you know if we need. But if you're looking at a regional cleanup, then what we really want is to get rid of all dirty fuels. So at the moment, remember, as you mentioned, thermal power plants are, uh, you know, exempted from the ban. Other than that, um, you know, mostly fossil fuels are also, uh, you know, uh, allowed to be used in selective industrial applications. So, you know, biomass, metallurgical coke, all of that is uh, can be used by industries in selective application. And now, you know, a couple of challenges uh, will remain as far as the implementation of this ban is concerned. Mm. First, of course, you know, compliance monitoring will have to be ensured. Other than that, uh, you know, people are also uh, talking now about, uh, you know, the pricing policy because now natural gas is more expensive than coal. So, of course, that is also something that will have to be taken care of. Remember, uh, uh, industrial pollution contributes nearly, uh, in the industries, in fact, contribute nearly 30% uh, to the PM 2.5, that lethal cancer-causing pollution. So, this is a welcome move, but challenges remain. Maha. Absolutely. Vedant, many thanks for uh, getting us all those details and the perspective into this ban. Now, North India has been able to get some respite from the bitter cold wave conditions, but the respite is only temporary and will last till New Year's Eve. Temperatures are again set to dip from the 1st of January onwards, as per IMD predictions. Divya Vadva reports. About a hundred flights were disrupted because of thick fog in the capital today. But there is some relief from the biting cold in Delhi, Chandigarh and neighbouring states after plunging temperatures for the last three days to below normal. However, this relief will be short-lived, with the minimum temperature rising to about 8 degrees tomorrow night, but then falling from New Year's Eve onwards. There will be not much uh, you know, difficulty in tonight, tomorrow and on 30th. But we expect that fresh spell of dense fog will start maybe 31st night or first morning so that we are monitoring because fog prediction is very challenging so so but fresh spell of cold from 31st night or first night hmm. and fresh spell of dense fog from 31st morning or 31st night for thousands of homeless in the capital the suffering continues <laughs> Donations of blankets have picked up pace with those shivering on the streets. Details of how to donate can be accessed on NDTV.com. And for all the travellers headed to Srinagar to bring in the new year, first snowfall of the season is expected tomorrow because of a western disturbance. NDTV Bureau Report. And now a set of two pictures representing two faces of the police. On the one side, a senior Delhi police officer who lost 46 kgs weight in eight months, setting an example of being fit. Deputy Commissioner of Police Jitendra Mani faced multiple health issues due to being overweight and took charge of the situation and has now been lauded by the police commissioner for being fit for service. On the other hand, in a surprise check by a senior police official in Uttar Pradesh, here's what a sub-inspector did or rather not do. 
He was unable to even load a bullet in the rifle, triggering laughter from onlookers, but clearly presenting a very worrisome situation about the kind of training given to the cops. The incident took place when a DIG visited a police station in Santkabir Nagar in Uttar Pradesh.